This is a dragster. It's the fastest acceleration vehicle on the face of the Earth. Its acceleration is so insane that it beats fighter jets with afterburners engaged, rockets, and even some missiles. These insane vehicles go from zero to 500 kilometers per hour in less than four seconds, and from zero to 100 in just half a second. At these speeds, the smallest mistake can turn this engineering masterpiece into a rolling fireball. One twitch, one bad vibration, and everything can go wrong before the brain can even process what happened. At launch, the driver experiences a force of six Gs. The Dragster is equipped with a monstrous V8 engine with 11,000 horsepower and consumes about 15 liters of fuel per second during the run. That is more fuel consumption than a Boeing 747 during takeoff. And this fuel is not delivered by an ordinary pump, but by a super pump. And it is not just any fuel. These vehicles use a special fuel called nitromethane, which already contains oxygen in its molecular structure. This allows it to burn much more violently, but with less use of atmospheric air, which translates into more power. This added to the fact that this fuel burns at much higher temperatures of around 2,400 degrees Celsius also translates into more power. In fact, the torque generated by these engines is so great that it is possible to observe the car's chassis deforming during the first seconds of launch. The exhausts are deliberately angled upward because these engines produce so much power that the exhaust gases alone can generate up to 450 kilograms of downforce. That force is added to the five and a half tons of downforce generated by the dragster's rear airfoil when the vehicle is traveling at top speed. The front airfoil is also very important to the dragster's stability and can generate about 320 kilograms of downforce. This is why these cars do not lose grip or take off from the ground despite the speeds they reach. By definition, a dragster is a type of lightweight vehicle usually weighing just over one ton, including the driver, with extremely powerful engines, specially designed for drag racing. They first appeared in the United States in the 1960s, and the competitions in which these vehicles race are divided into four categories. Pro Stock Motorcycle, Pro Stock, Funny Car, and Top Fuel. The Top Fuel category is the most violent of all, and the one that contains the craziest and fastest drag racing cars in the world. One of the first things that stands out in a top fuel dragster is its shape, which is not aesthetic, but rather a result of pure engineering. Every detail was designed to reduce air resistance, increase stability, and maximize traction at launch. The long and narrow chassis, just over seven meters in length, helps prevent the car from lifting its front end when brute force is applied during launch, while the narrow shape reduces aerodynamic drag meaning resistance to the wind. The long distance between the front and rear wheels helps counter the immense launch forces, preventing the front wheels from lifting too high and the car from taking off into the air. The entire vehicle is made of several chromium steel tubes that function as a huge cage, protecting and helping to reduce impact energy in case of accidents or explosions, thus protecting the driver. The driver, for his part, is positioned further back in the vehicle, surrounded by a structure that contains a combination of riveted steel, titanium panels, carbon composites, and Kevlar. All of this ensures maximum protection against extreme acceleration, deformations, rollovers, engine explosions, fragments, and high temperatures above 1000 degrees Celsius. The engine is the key component of the entire vehicle Located just behind the driver, it is basically the most powerful piston engine in the world and also one of the most dangerous engines in the world. That is because they are quite unpredictable. Made from a forged aluminum block, it contains pistons, connecting rods, and a crankshaft, just like a conventional engine. The difference is that everything is much stronger and resistant, and while a conventional car has one spark plug per cylinder, 
A dragster engine has two, totaling 16 spark plugs. But these spark plugs are a lot more powerful than the ones on your car. They have an output voltage that exceeds 40,000 volts, since nitromethane is harder to ignite than gasoline or ethanol. This is enough current not only to kill someone instantly, but also to produce an arc so hot that it could be used for welding. At full load, the plugs last at most 3 to 4 seconds before melting or burning away. But the engine continues to run by inertia and from the incandescence of the nitromethane itself. The tremendous force these engines generate not only melts spark plugs, but also subjects all engine components to excessive stress, which results in severe damage and requires them to be completely rebuilt after each race. This means that the engine suffers in seconds what a conventional car engine would suffer in hundreds of thousands of kilometers. In addition, the parts must be custom made with clearances to compensate for thermal expansion. The fuel that powers all of this is nitromethane, which is a mixture of 90% nitro and 10% methanol. This fuel is known for its high combustion rate and ability to generate large amounts of energy Nitromethane burns with a much hotter and much faster flame than gasoline, and it can even continue burning in the exhaust in the absence of oxygen, producing a bright white flame. In a single race, which lasts 3 to 5 seconds, a dragster consumes about 60 litres of nitromethane. That is, a staggering 15 litres of fuel per second. That is why dragsters do not use an electric fuel pump, like in regular cars, but rather a very high-flow mechanical pump driven directly by the engine's crankshaft. This ensures that the operating speed of the pump is directly proportional to the engine's rotational speed, preventing fuel shortage or excess fuel flooding the engine and causing a hydrolock. Nitromethane itself acts as a lubricant for the pump since there is no internal oil, and the pump is made of special aluminum alloys, titanium, and treated steels to resist the chemical corrosion caused by the fuel. The supercharger is also a key component of the dragster. It allows absurd amounts of air to be sucked in and sent directly to the engine's intake manifold, so that the engine receives much more air to mix with the fuel and perform combustion. Sticking far out of the engine and weighing about 100 kilograms, it forces approximately 14 cubic meters of air per second into the engine. The pressure generated reaches 4.5 to 5 bar, or 65 psi, above atmospheric pressure. This means that the engine receives almost five times more air than it would naturally suck in. Without it, the engine couldn't burn such vast amounts of fuel, and as a result, it would never reach 11,000 horsepower. While regular cars have a gearbox, the dragster has its insane power transmitted directly to the wheels, passing only through a clutch. Thus, in a dragster, the clutch is used as a power control system in the first seconds of launch, preventing the engine's full power from being released all at once to the wheels, which would make them spin excessively and destroy themselves before the vehicle even moves. Normally, these clutches are made of five to seven large carbon fiber and steel discs. Each disc is pressed against another by a set of springs and centrifugal arms. The car launches with the clutch still partially disengaged and every hundredth of a second, the clutch goes from almost loose to fully locked. It is not the driver who controls this with his foot. Instead, everything is managed by an automatic clutch system. This makes the car go from 0 to 530 km per hour in less than 4 seconds, without the tires spinning excessively. And speaking of tires, they are another critical part of the vehicle. They are impressive not only for their size, almost 1.2 meters, but also for their performance, as they are certified and capable of taking the vehicle to speeds above 530 km per hour in 4 seconds without exploding something unthinkable for any other type of tyre. Made almost exclusively by Goodyear Racing for all dragsters, they are a true work of engineering. Unlike regular cars, where the tyre is kept on the wheel only by internal pressure, in dragsters, this would not be enough, since internal pressure 
is very low and the enormous forces could rip the tire off the wheel. That is why they use a system of rings with more than 30 bolts. At launch, it is possible to see the tires deforming and wrinkling within the first few seconds. This occurs due to the low air pressure with which these tires are inflated. This low pressure allows the tire to deform, creating a larger, flatter contact area at the start, providing maximum grip and traction. As the car accelerates, centrifugal force expands the tire, increasing its volume and reducing friction, which increases top speed. Another factor for the low pressure is the reduction of the risk of tire explosions right at launch, since if they were fully inflated, they could spin excessively and explode before the vehicle even moved. Before the race, drivers perform a burnout to heat up, clean, and apply a new layer of rubber onto the track surface, optimizing grip. In addition, two technicians also sequentially clean the tires by hand to ensure there is no debris stuck to them. But dragsters also need to lose all that speed safely and within the track. For this, the main braking system is the parachute, deployed right after the driver crosses the finish line. Due to the extreme forces and performance demanded in this sport, accidents are almost always present. Every kind of accident imaginable occurs. Many of them happen even before the race begins with the engine exploding, for example. Sometimes, the vehicle itself disintegrates or takes off due to the tremendous wind force acting on it in the very first seconds of the race, which results in a catastrophic accident and total destruction of the vehicle. And despite the violence of the accidents, deaths do not occur constantly because the vehicle itself serves as a cage that protects the driver, in addition to a series of safety equipment, such as a fireproof suit, helmet, gloves, a multi-point quick-release seat belt, onboard fire extinguishers, damage-resistant lines and connections, among many others. A top-fuel dragster is the most extreme form of race car ever built by humans. It is not designed for corners, comfort or durability, but rather to fulfill a single function, to accelerate as fast as possible in a straight line for 402 meters, or a quarter of a mile. These vehicles represent the limit of automotive engineering and applied physics, combining insane engines with more than 11,000 horsepower, making them capable of a brutal acceleration from zero to more than 500 kilometers per hour in under four seconds. These are machines where comfort doesn't matter, only speed. But what if I told you there was once a car suspension so advanced it made driving feel like floating on a magic carpet and could even jump over road obstacles? And yet, it disappeared from the roads. Click on this video to discover the forgotten Bose suspension and why cars still don't use it today.